Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is our live Tuesday night art journal show, and we're going to play in the art journal again today and use kind of do a really cool uh, technique with a kind of a resist. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the camera. I do have Joe here helping, and he's going to put in the links. If you have any questions, if you can put them in bold, we'll do our best to answer them. Let me change cameras. Okay. Now, I had to sneak, I had to do a little bit of prep prior to getting here tonight. So, this is a really cool stencil that I got from um, Plaid Enterprises, and it's part of their um, folk art paint stencils. And what I like about these stencils is they're really large. You see how big this image is? I mean, it almost fits my whole journal, which is kind of cool. And then it's got two more smaller. Um, swirls up here on top too so you actually have three stencils on this so what i did is i took this stencil and i laid it down and i only wanted this the bottom step part i didn't do these two and normally i don't use gloss i have to admit i'm kind of a matte girl but this particular technique i did specifically grab my gel medium gloss Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. The heavy gel medium gloss. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the heavy. It just, this was the only one I had in a gloss, to be honest, because I don't buy gloss a whole lot. Um, and I laid this stencil down right in the center here. And I used the gloss and went through that with the stencil and let it dry. I did this off camera because I wanted it to be good and dry prior to you guys coming. So if you look, you can see it there. So you can kind of see the image. And it kind of also kind of reminded me of a butterfly. And I just came back from Phoenix, went to visit my mommy. And while I was over there, we went to this really cool butterfly wonderland. And if you are a Facebook friend of mine, I have a ton of photos on there. So get a chance, um, go check it out. I'm doing a really quick soft mist of water over my whole page. And then so I you, have, I have to interrupt. So you had a good time in Phoenix. I did have a good time in Phoenix. Very good. I had a great time um, visiting my mom and seeing some old friends and one particular friend I've known for 41 years. That tells you how old I am. So I got some twinkling H2 hours out here. And I've got greens and blues, and I just had to throw a purple in there, of course. And I did um, spray them about five minutes prior to you guys showing up, just to get them working and activating. So now I'm going to go in with this, the lightest blue, and I just kind of want to tap it around the page a little bit. I'm not really going to have any rhyme or reason. You guys kind of know me about this. I don't really think. I just go in there and just go for it. Now, everywhere I did this, um, the gloss, it's going to actually resist that. So really kind of shows. Oh, I did not gesso because we are using watercolors. I've taught you guys this before. Whenever I'm using, I never gesso my. And if you want your watercolors to move a little more, you can go in there and spray a little more water on them. Get them, you know, playing. I'm going to clean my brush in a little darker blue. And just keep tapping it around and colors become, you know, moldy. Or not moldy as in up. together, not moldy. Terry, you're breaking up a little bit, but I, I think it's you. Okay, if it gets continues to get worse, let me know, and we will uh, have to cancel this for tonight. But hopefully not. If it does, then I will just do a video. Um, I'm trying to get Facebook give me Facebook Live, and they have not given me permission for that yet. But this butterfly exhibit had three thousand different types of butterflies in it. It was so. Okay, so I'm going to go in and grab just a little bit of this green. Keep doing this melding of colors here. Just letting them. So for some reason, we have to cancel tonight because of the uh, um, hangout not playing nicely. 
So I will do this technique on a video. And I know we won't have any problems there, but it works fine. This is all hangout problems. Go ask um, Facebook to give me live. I keep asking for it, and they keep saying I'm not famous enough. So I'm just going to let it move a little bit here and kind of do its thing. Could even do this. See what happens now. So I'm going to grab my gun, my heat gun, maybe. Where is it? I was just using it, so I know I have it here. Oh, there it is. And just heat this and let it kind of stop moving a little bit. Okay, now again, I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to kind of almost start over. I'm going to kind of go back in with that really light blue and add that back in again, because it kind of got lost a little bit. That's okay. We can bring it back in. That's the advantage of coming in and doing um, layers, and if you see a lot of designers who do a lot of layering, that's why, is for that exact reason, is to keep layering on top of it. And you see how the um, the stencil is getting resisted. Kind of cool, huh? You could actually do the same technique if you don't have gel medium with um, uh, embossing powder, which actually I'm going to do here if we make it through the whole video. I'm hoping <laughs> the whole show tonight. If we don't break up too much. I don't want us to break up. Let's not break up. Okay, see, isn't that looking pretty? Oh, wow. Let's dry a little more. You'll notice, too, that when you dry, you kind of, um, the colors will kind of get softer also. So it really allows you to really play with your colors really well. I'm coming back in again with that really light blue. I really like that color. Okay, I'm grabbed a little bit of that darker blue that kind of has a little bit of purple to it. Just kind of tapping that around. And as you see, I'm, you notice what I'm doing? I'm actually just tapping the brush on there. Just tapping that color into place. And then getting it wet every once in a while, just kind of letting it move. Mm, liking that a lot. Right off the bat, I just noticed I'm kind of a little unbalanced. I have a lot of this kind of blue right here over on this side, but I don't seem to have it over here. So I'm going to come in and fill that in just a little bit. And what I do a lot is when, I, um, when I'm drying, I kind of have let my eye travel across my page. And this is a good tip for you guys when you're designing. And see what you notice. And first thing I noticed was that color being over here, but not being on this side. So going in making a quick adjustment and we're done okay I like that okay I'm gonna pull this off bring in just plain old piece of paper while we let this dry here a little more and I kind of want to do that same technique the resist technique, but instead of using um, gel medium, I'm going to use embossing powder. So again, 
Remember I told you I've seen all these beautiful butterflies. I'm going to teach you guys something really cool about <clears throat> monarch butterflies. Those are the ones that are all black. They are, they trap, they migrate. They, they're the animal that migrates the furthest of all animals in the world. Isn't that fascinating? And you ready for this? It takes them three generations to migrate. So three generations to migrate the furthest distance of any animal in the world. A simple little butterfly. Isn't that just fascinating? Oh, this is green. I don't want it green. I want it black, but that's okay. We're going with green. <laughs> Got the wrong color out. Oh, well. I thought it was my black when I grabbed it. That's okay. No big deal. But yeah, isn't that just fascinating about the monarch butterflies? They travel further than any other animal in the world to do their migration. That just blew my mind. Okay. Most of you know how to do a simple uh, embossing technique. This stuff is way too thick. Let me get another embossing powder. I don't like that one. Hold on here. I didn't like that at all. It's way too thick. I think I brought, grabbed my ultra thick embossing powder. I did. Didn't want that. Oh well. See, I wanted black all along. But isn't that fascinating about the monarch butterflies? I thought that was just so cool. And also, there's another thing that's kind of interesting about them. They fly over a mile high. Who would have ever thought that a butterfly can fly that high? Never would have guessed it in a million years. So, this time I grabbed my black embossing powder. This is a lot thicker, or a lot less chunky. Much better. Okay, let's boss that. Okay, now just like the same technique I just did with the, um, the uh, gel medium, I can also do with embossing powder. So again, I grab my twinkling H2Os. I should have added water to this one, but I didn't. Let me see if I can get it going here. Just mixing some good water into it, getting a good flow. And I don't even have to think. I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Because everything that I don't want will resist. And I'm cutting that out anyways. So I don't have to be fancy about it. Even though, isn't that a pretty background right there? That would be pretty card. Okay. I keep throwing my gun on the ground. I have to keep reaching for it. Okay. I'm going to put that to the side and let that finish drying while because I can't get it too hot with the embossing powder on there. So I've got this um, st uh, stamp from Hero Arts. They don't make it anymore. It's a swirl stamp. So I don't have the um, link for you. But, you know, it's a basic swirl stamp. You can get any type of swirl stamp. But what I want to show you here is to think of your stamps differently. Um, making sure I'm going the right way. You don't always have to use the whole image when you're stamping. I am going to grab, this is Indian ink, and I'm just going to stamp on the outside of my, and I'm only going to get about half the image. So see how I get a nice cool little border there, but I don't need that whole image. So kind of look at your stamps in a different way that you might be able to use them um, as just a partial.
So I've got half of it on and half of it off, and that's why I have a piece of paper there. It's still wet. Yeah, that butterfly exhibit was really cool. They had um, over 3,000 different types of butterflies there. It was a huge room. I would say it was about 10,000 square feet. And there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of butterflies there. Um, just, you know, flying around, landing on you. It was so cool. My mother is a big butterfly fan, so... When I seen that they had that there, I went and got us tickets and we went for the day. It was kind of fun. It was a good day with mom. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to be off camera there. I was just stamping that top there. But yeah, so if you ever go to Phoenix, you might want to go to the butterfly exhibit. It's pretty cool. Oh, they also had, this was fun too, they had a nursery there, you know, like, um, I called it a nursery, they didn't really call it a nursery, it's where the baby butterflies were being hatched, so I called it a nursery, but you, they actually were, had, um, some actually hatching while we were in there, it was really cool, so, okay, there we go, I like it. Okay, now this is almost dry. I'm going to give it a few more seconds to finish drying. So, yeah, is it in that pretty already? Well, that's drying. Let me pull this down. And I have a tag. And this is a stamp set from Unity that they don't make anymore. I guess they retire their stamps. But it's just a sentiment stamp. So, really, you know, any sentiment would work. But I want you to. Think about using a tag as a way to put your sentiment down. And I'm going to put it towards me just to make sure I get it right. And it says, imagine. So that's what my little sentiment says. Put that and that to the side here because we're going to use that in a minute. And also in that same set is this really tiny, tiny little butterfly. I had to use that. So hopefully this page is dry enough for me to start stamping all over. Still a little wet. Damn. Not that I think any of us will have time, but uh, CHJ is actually in Phoenix next year. But I don't think any of us will have time to uh, go see the butterfly exhibit. So I'm just going to stamp this little butterfly around the page a little bit. Even though it's just probably a little too wet to be doing this, but that's okay. We're going to do it anyways. There we go. One more right there. Okay, I'm going to grab this butterfly that we just did a few seconds ago, and I'm going to cut it out. Um, reminder, when you are fussy cutting, that you move the paper and not the scissors, per se. Um, meaning, see how I'm kind of keeping my scissors closed and um, close by but then I'm moving my paper around and I am going to pull some this is really thick paper so I need to cut some of this off because it's and never hard. close those scissors all the way or it'll tear that's true too yes there's another good tip um, if you close your scissors all the way it gives us little uh, like jagged edges so always keep your scissors moving. And we share a tip every day on the Create and Craft page on Facebook, facebook.com slash create, the letter N like Nancy, craft. So go like that page if you haven't already. If you haven't, shame on you. There's some great tips over there too. I always go over and read them myself every day. 
Um, so definitely check them out and see all the great tips. And then, you know, they're really shareable tips too because um, they're done with really pretty graphics. So you can really share them really nicely. So I like that. Okay. Oh, that, that butterfly looks like a real butterfly. That Doesn't seems it? spectacular. <laughs> Not cool. And so you fussy am... cut fast, girl. <laughs> Where'd you learn to move them hands like that? That's what I'm I am. Asking. I am quick. Give them a little bit of dimension. That does look, especially on camera, that really does look real. So I did bend it just a little bit to give it a little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to grab my sentiment. I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to put that right there. And I think we are done. Again, another simple page. I like my pages sometimes really simple. I think they make almost more of a statement than the, uh, I'm grabbing some adhesives. <laughs> I forgot to grab adhesive. Um, sometimes I think simple pages make more of a statement than a, um, you know, really fancy pages. Not saying that I don't make fancy pages sometimes, because I do. We all know that. But I really like the simple ones, too. And I also want you to know, besides the fact that a monarch butterfly is um, orange and black, the reason I picked the orange is another little bit of a lesson. You know me, I like to give you guys lessons. Since I put so many blues and greens in the background, what is a complementary color to those colors is orange. See how that's really popping off the page like that? Pull that in a little more. So that's why I did that. Now on this, I am only going to put adhesive in the center of my butterfly. Actually, I did. I had a flower. Hold on. Maybe I'll put a flower in there too. I had a flower that I was going to use. Yeah, the flower is kind of covering up the imagination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always go with your first instincts. It's usually correct, anyways. So I'm just putting adhesive in the center here. So it'll allow me to keep with my dimension. And then again, I'm going to kind of like give it just a little bit of a fold. And that'll give my dimension for my butterfly. Even with the book closed, it, you know, it'll still give a tiny bit of dimension without it being, you know. Isn't that pretty? Now, I also, while you're down there, see how that half a stamp on the edges, how cool that is? See the resist there in the center? You can still see that big image. And then, of course, the Twinkling H2Os have those beautiful little shimmer to it. That's why it's hard to catch the light because it has so much shimmer to them. But you could do this with any type of water technique or watercolor. Actually, next week I already have my idea planned out. And we're going to use the um, Neo Color uh, 2s. And they are also kind of a watercolor but they're more of a pencil instead of the cake like that a twinkling H2O is. Okay, is there any questions? Okay, I'm assuming that's a big no on the questions. <laughs> so that was a quick page. Dang, we're getting good at these guys. So I hope you guys also watched my video from last week. I think I have it in here. Yes, I do. Oh, just brought down my, I made you guys a beautiful video last week of this beautiful thing. So if you missed um, seeing me last week, I made you this beautiful thing. And I taught you how to make that. So and that's actually a real book in there. I think that, that looks amazing. Isn't that cool? I really liked it too. Well, so and it sparked you, a lot of discussion about the spoon part. Can yeah, you show that spoon part again? Yes. There. And that's actually a real spoon. I liked it. I really liked it. Yep, that's um a friend of mine had lost his home and it got burned down. And he had you know how people collect all those little in, small spoons from all over the world? That's one of the small spoons that had actually burned and it was actually charcoal. And so I cleaned it up the best I could, but you can't make it pretty again, so I put paint on it, made it pretty again. <laughs> so so um, I want to appreciate all you guys for showing up. I'll see you next week, and we're going to play with those Neo Color 2s. So um, 
I'll see you next Tuesday. If you have any questions, remember to join my group called All Things Terry Sprout, and I'll help you out as much as I can. Make sure you like, create, and craft, and also like my page. Bye, guys.